Welcome back, everybody, to another SBO episode here. Today, you're going to learn a little something today, because today we are going to talk about that magical substance that all ultralight backpackers revere, and that is Cuban fiber. So I'm going to go through a little bit of the history of Cuban fiber. It's kind of interesting, actually. I did some digging. Um, I'll show you a bunch of different examples of different types of Cuban fiber. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about the pros and the cons, but most people that don't backpack have never heard of Cuban fiber. Everyone who backpacks generally knows what it is or at least heard of it. And of course the ultralighters all know what it is, but most of my friends who don't backpack, they've never heard of it and it's kind of interesting. So let's get started. So where did Cuban fiber even come from? Well, we got to go back to 1992. There's a really famous sailing race called the America's Cup. Um, it's a yacht sailing race. And back in 1992, um, a boat showed up there called the uh, America Cubed. America with a little three, America Cubed. And it had some pretty wonky looking sails on it. Um, sails that people hadn't really seen before. And as it turned out, that same year, two guys who I can only assume are German by the name of Heiner Meldner and Roland Downs filed US patent W0199401185 A1 material for the fabrication of sails and that patent had the very first remnants of what would become Cuban fiber so the name Cuban fiber comes from the name of that boat America Cubed and the company that filed that patent was actually the America Cubed Foundation. So the term Cuban fiber comes from the name of that boat, America Cubed, that was the first boat to use these sails. And these sails, of course, were made of the earliest rendition of what would become Cuban fiber. So that patent actually talk about, talks about using a, a reinforced laminate for the use in sails. It has tremendous shear strength keeps its uh, shape when, when submitted to pressures and is highly windproof and waterproof. Perfect, perfect material to make sails out of. So in 1992, they file this patent, they use these sweet sails, this boat does really well. Um, Cuban fiber uh, starts to gain really big traction in the sailing community as material they make their sails out of. So in 1992, these two Germans, I think they're German, I don't know if they actually are, they're really German names file this patent. The America Cube Foundation uses these sweet sails and the Cuban Fiber Company um, is created to start uh, building these sails to be used in yachts because the material was was so good. So the Cuban Fiber Corporation, that's what it was called, um, does this for about 15 years and then in 2007 a company uh, called North Sales buys Cuban Fiber Corporation and then Several other things happen and we become, we get to the Cubic Tech Corporation, which is when I started buying Cuban fiber stuff, that's what I, I it was called Cubic Tech or Cubic Tech Corporation. Um, that's who kind of started creating a lot of the Cuban fiber that was used for backpacking needs. I, I don't honestly don't know who the first guy or girl was that saw this lightweight sail material and was like, man, this is super light and super strong. Let's start making backpacking gear. I, I don't know how that happened. Maybe maybe someone watching this does. I'd be really interested to know how that uh, jump happened. So in 2015, the Dyneema Corporation finally comes into the picture and they buy, which is a Dutch company, they buy Cubic Tech and now Cuban Fiber is known as Dyneema because they bought it. So you hear, you hear Dyneema now, it's the same thing. It's just bought by a new company, but it's the same product. So that's just a brief history um, on Cuban fiber, where it came from. The name Cuban fiber came from the boat America Cubed, and it was used as sails because it's super light and it has great sheer strength, and it's windproof and waterproof, and it's the perfect material to make sails out of. So that's where it came from. So it's 2017 now. We've got all these different types of Cuban fiber that can be used for various different backpacking applications. I've got examples of several. I'm gonna run you through them and show you guys kind of the various different forms of Cuban fiber that are on the market right now. All right, the tour tour of Cuban fiber is about to begin. So check this out. This is this is a dinosaur. 
This is, I think, almost 10 years old. Andy got me this for Christmas, I want to say in 2009. This is one of the original style Cuban fiber dry bags you can get. And it's actually held up pretty well, but you can see. So see how these seams right there, these seams start to develop over repeated use. And that's where you could get some breakage. But I don't, I don't use this anymore. Um, just because I have so many new Cuban fiber dry bags, but this, and if, and if um, God, I don't even know who makes it, Andy might know. I'll throw a picture of one of the original sales up on the screen, and it does kind of look like it. But this right here is what the uh, initial Cuban fiber looked like that was on the backpacking market. So Cuban fiber comes in ounce per square yard. That's that's like the um, the measurement system. So there's various ounce weights per square yard. This is the lightest I have. This is 0.5 ounce per square yard Cuban fiber. Um, it's really light. This is a uh, stuff sack from Hammock Gear. So uh, my Cuban fiber tarp from Hammock Gear is also 0.5 ounce per square yard Cuban fiber. z -Packs makes a 0.3 something, 0.3 ounce per square yard Cuban fiber that's lighter and they make some of their tarps out of it. This is the lightest I have. You can see it's super crunchy. And we can compare that to one ounce per square yard Cuban fiber. And that is my Z-Packs, one of my Z-Packs um, stuff sacks. So if you can see this, you know how much heavier it is. It's just much more crunchy and heavier. This is one ounce per square yard uh, Cuban fiber. It's heavier, it's more durable, um, but it's got the same sort of feel to it. It's just, you can tell it's noticeably heavier and it's much crinklier. Yeah. Um, so this is twice the, the weight per square, per square yard than this one. So moving on, this might be my favorite, other than I pack my favorite kind of Cuban fiber. This is 1.4 ounce per square yard Cuban fiber. So much, like compare the, you know, the half ounce to the 1.4, it's much heavier and much more durable. This is my z -Packs Roll Top Blast Food Bag. So um, obviously the heavier Cuban fiber is used for conditions where you need dur more durable stuff. So a food bag, which I'm hoisting up into trees, scraping on the ground all the time. Um, that's what's gonna be made out of this heavier stuff. And I really like this. This thing, we've used this a lot, and th this is a great food bag. It is bomb proof. This Cuban fiber, you know, compared to, so you got one ounce per square yard, 1.4 ounce per square yard, and then half ounce per square yard. So you can really feel the durability difference between the three. And this might be my favorite. I mean, you don't need like a dry bag made out of it because you can get this and it's just as waterproof but for durability this is this is king so lastly we have this is 4.8 ounce per square yard so much heavier you can just see this is almost can see this is my z-packs arc haul this is one of those cuban fiber hybrid type materials so this is cuban fiber with a grid of ripstop sewn into it which gives it this hugely tough i mean it's super strong i mean this compared to this it's it's not even close um you know you have actual like stuff set cuban fiber and you have this 4.8 ounce polyurethane coated cuban fiber with a ripstop sewn into it so it's super durable and I think this is where you know this field is going because the one issue with Cuban fiber packs is they're just not durable but when you start getting these alloys of Cuban fiber you really get a super durable material that's lightweight and still retains uh, the water and wind resistance that's made Cuban fiber famous. So that's just a couple of the different kinds of Cuban fiber that I have and each one has its own purpose you know the the heavier weight Cuban fiber for the packs and food bags and the lighter weight Cuban fiber for the stuff sacks and the tarps. Um, it's a, we're in a really interesting time now where we're getting like the pack, we're getting almost like Cuban fiber al alloys, um, where it's Cuban fiber with other things wo woven in to make it stronger. All right, so let's talk about the pros and the cons. So the obvious pros to this material are it's lightweight. I mean, that's why it gets used. It's lightweight and it's naturally waterproof and windproof. And that's like the perfect backpacking material. So the negatives, it's super expensive. You know, a Cuban fiber dry bag and a sil nylon dry bag, they might, the Cuban fiber one might cost twice as much. 
it is somewhat fragile and especially it'll create these seams where you um, bend it a lot and those seams can start to go. So the main cons are it's expensive. I mean that's the biggest con. It's an expensive material um, and it can be fragile. Uh, you know it has really great shear stress but man if you took a little knife or anything it would it would slice it down the middle. Um, so it's just expensive and it's fragile but it's a great material there's great usage for it. I'm not saying everything needs to be Cuban fiber in your pack but it has it definitely like dry bags are a good thing good cheap thing to get made out of Cuban fiber you know we have Cuban fiber tarps and they're fantastic but they're really expensive um, and our packs are a Cuban fiber like material um, they're one of these exciting new what I'll call like a Cuban fiber polymer so Get yourself some Cuban fiber, check it out. It will lighten your load and it's a great material for backpacking. So thanks for watching. Let us know your thoughts on Cuban fiber if you guys think it's worth the, uh, the price. Thanks.